RSM with a CCS2 install. To get to your RSM site, you need to go to www.nrminc.com, listed here at the top of the page. This is our main website with a lot of useful tools, and access to the RSM site is through here. Go to the RSM login link in the top right corner, click on it, and that will bring you into the login page. If you don't have a username and password yet, you can do that by create a new user link. Click on that, and that will bring you to the information page. Fill out all the information, click add user, and then NRM will activate you for your RSM site. Once you have your username and password, enter that information in, click Submit, and that will bring you to the main menu page. On this main menu page, you will only have access to the sites that you are part of. We are going to go to an NRM walk-in cooler and show you what the RSM site looks like. Once you log into the RSM summary page, all of this data on here is real-time information. Anytime a variable changes on the controller, it will automatically update on this page. To go through this page real quick, to familiarize yourself with it, we have the description of the walk-in cooler. Any additional notes that may or may not be required is listed here. This status section is the status of communication and alarms. The green flag means that everything is communicating. There is also a website communication. So if your network is down, this flag will go to red, and that just means that our communication is down and we have no information coming into the server. If there were any active alarms on this site, it would be listed right here. Temperature section. Each controller has a space temperature and an evaporator temperature. The space temperature is used for the controlling of the refrigeration. That's the temperature that the refrigeration will turn on and off with. The evaporator temperature is used to know that it's safe to shut the fans off, diagnosing purposes, and defrost purposes. The next two sections, the DIF, which stands for differential, and SP, which stands for set point, is what your controller is being controlled at. Set point is the low point of the refrigeration. Anything that's underlined on this summary page is something that you can click on and change a value of. So you have that access for the set point, uh, the mode, the defrost. You can get into the controller itself, programming of the controller, and then you can also look at the alarms. I will go into those items later. To continue on with the summary page, this 24 hour is the average temperature over the last 24 hours. This status section is the status of the controller. Run mode means that where our system is in control. You can put our system into bypass by clicking on the run mode and put our system into bypass by clicking OK. Bypass is the scenario where it takes all of our control aspect out of the loop and puts the old existing system back into control. Defrost, SOL stands for solenoid, which is the call for cooling, and fan, evaporator fan. This next section, the door, is the door sensor on the man door of the cooler or freezer. This lets you know whether the door is opened or closed at this time. Amp section. We have an amp meter or a current transducer that is put on the compressor itself to know if the compressor is actually running or not. So when our call for cooling is happening, there should be an ant drawer. Right now, we're not calling for cooling and the compressor is off showing zero amps. Next few sections are statistical sections. We have starts in a 24 hour period. So we record the number of times we call for cooling under the solenoid column 
the number of times the compressor is actually turned on under the compressor column, and the number of times the evaporator fan has turned on. This is on here to help identify short cycling. If there was a severe short cycling scenario, you would see the difference of the solenoid starts and compressor starts vary by quite a bit. And there is an alarm set up for that to send out that notification of a short cycling. Percent runtime 24 hours and percent runtime seven days. This lets you know on how much the system is actually running in those time periods. So again, we have the solenoid call column, which is the call for cooling, the compressor column, which is the compressor actually running, and the evaporator fan column, both for 24 hours and seven days. On this page, we also have door heater information. Your cooler or freezer may or may not have door heater control installed on it. If it does, it will be displayed on the screen. And this gives you all of the information of what the door heater is doing. We have the relative humidity calculation. We have the power that the door heaters are running at, the percentage of power. So in this instance, the cooler is running at 30% and the freezer is running at 60%. And then you also have the statistical information of percent power 24 hours and percent power seven days. You can also adjust the heat output from the factory it is set for normal heat output if you have issues with the door heaters condensing or icing up you can raise the heat output and the door heaters will run at a higher percentage to help eliminate those issues also listed on this summary page are any alarms that have happened as you can see, there have been three alarms on this cooler that have happened over the last few days, and they're listed here. The way alarms work is there is a start time that the alarm is activated at. If the alarm goes away, meaning goes back to normal parameters, the alarm will end and give you an end time. There is also the ability to acknowledge an alarm. What that means is anyone that has access to your site has the ability to acknowledge an alarm. And to do that, you click on the text of the alarm. I will do that for this first one. And once I do, this alarm will disappear off the page. The reason that it disappeared off the page is as soon as all three of these fields are filled out, the start time, the end time, and the acknowledge time, the alarm will disappear off the page. If an alarm has not been acknowledged after four days from its start time, the computer will automatically acknowledge it, whether it has ended or not. Also on this summary page is a comment section. This is here for you to use however you deem necessary. You can click on the folder, enter your comment, you can flag a particular de device for it. You can also set an expiration date for the comment. And then you can also email it to anyone that has access to your site. I'm gonna go into the trend now. And to get to the trend, if you click on this graph symbol, that produces a graph of all of the data that we collect. To explain what we're looking at, we are looking at today over the last four hours. The right-hand side of this graph is the real time, and it goes back the last four hours. You'll notice that the, there is a pull-down menu. You can look at this graph in different lengths. You can go down to as low as a half-hour length, or you can go up to as high as a seven day length and see the overall view of what was going on for the last week. You can also go back and view previous history. So you can click on the calendar symbol and go back to the first day that your system has been installed.
on this graph, the dark blue line is the space temperature. The light blue line is the evaporator temperature. The red straight line is the set point that we are trying to maintain. This section is the amperage of the compressor. And then this section down here is the trace of what our controller is doing. Every time you see a line in the up position, that means it's calling for that item. Then we have the shutdown line. We have the ESM, which stands for energy savings mode, which is a setback scenario on a walk-in cooler. Then we have the bypass, and then the bottom line is the man door being opened or closed. So from this graph, you're able to do a little bit of diagnosing. You can see when we call for cooling, you obviously should see the compressor turning on. You should see the evaporator temperature dropping, the room temperature dropping. When it reaches its set point, the refrigeration, we stop the call for cooling, the compressor shuts off, and the fans shut off. To continue to the next subject, I am going to go into the settings of the cool troll system. To get into that, you click on the description of the cooler. And this will bring you into all of the settings available for the cool troll system. So you have your basic settings, which is set point, differential, solenoid fan delay, anti short cycle delay, minimum runtime, evaporator fan max delay, evaporator fan just stratification off time, evaporator fan just stratification on time, and set back temperature. All of these are set from the factory, and the only times they should be changed is if there is an issue with any of these items. The only one that should change periodically is the set point, which you also have access to change from the main summary page. Under defrost folder, you have the ability to change the defrost scenario. So you have the minimum duration, the interval, the end temperature, the interval type. If you chose to use thermatic electric defrost, the max time limit, the defrost drip time, and then the defrost boil off time. Again, these are all items that are set from the factory, and the only times they should be changed is if you are having an issue. And then the alarms folder, you are able to enable or disable and set the highs and the lows temperatures that you want the alarms to be activated at. Again, these are all set from the factory and only should be changed if you are having an issue. So back on the summary page, the last item to go over with you is the alarms. To access all of the available alarms, you can click on the alarm tab. There is a gateway folder that is uh, for communication. So if the site is not communicating, it will send out an alarm. And this is where you can change any of the delay times and also who may or may not receive these alarms also. Under the walk-in cooler, you have a bypass alarm, a communication status alarm, compressor failure to respond, compressor runtime, compressor safety temp differential, compressor starts, defrost, device temp high, device temp low, space probe, evaporator probe, set point change, and you have additional high and low temperatures available. Any item that is struck out means that is it is inhibited. If at any time you wanted to activate these alarms, you can open the folder and uninhibit this item and make sure that all of the values are set to what you want them to be set at. And to finally show you on how to set up people to receive alarms, 
If you click on this envelope symbol, that will bring you to the dashboard to be able to activate alarms. When you go into here, you are only going to see your name and your site on here. So if I will go down to my name. So you click on your name. You click on the site that you want to receive alarms for. You highlight the alarm topics that you want to receive. And then if you scroll down, you can click on how you want to receive them, whether it's email or mobile or both. So if you click both of them, so I will be receiving these alarms for this site via email and via mobile, which was set up during your user activation. Once you click submit, it will display on how many alarms you have been activated for. 266 alarms in this situation. And this concludes the basic RSM system for our basic DCS2 controller install. Thank you.